Hello and welcome to the Geeks Review. I'm Royce. I'm Liz. It's the end of year and we're going to take a look back at the year that was and uh, the stuff that did actually come out and sort of <laughs> discuss some of our favourites, a few shows we did see, movies we saw as well, maybe ones we've already talked about on the show before. Um, if you'd like to start us off, Liz, you know, I mean, you've watched quite a few programs this year, I understand. <laughs> Well, yes, because I'm a hard-working uni student, so I watch a lot of TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you put me on the spot. One movie... Oh, I'm going to talk about one movie that I watched. It was actually a few weeks ago. I'd never heard of it. I was looking in the horror section or something like that in Stan, and it was The Hunt. I didn't know what... I thought it would be something like um, akin to, like, the second Purge movie with all those rich people killing all the poor people or The Condemned. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised. The, 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 the main chick, she's mental and I love her. Yeah. Like, I her think... performance was just so out there. Um, the basic plot of this is that it's a bunch of, you know, left wing extremists who capture right wing. Well, no. capture anyone who they deem uh, ignorant or problematic. Problematic. Yeah. And they put them on sort of game reserve, don't they? And then go to hunt them down with yeah. mixed results. And it's um, Betty Gilpin, is it, yes. from, I believe she's from the show Glow oh, on Netflix. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen Glow. haven't seen it as well, but she's from that. And also uh, Hilary Swank. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah. God, I love her. <laughs> I, I just remember the first movie I ever saw Hilary Swank in was the original 1992 Buffy movie. Yes. And she had classic, uh, classic lines like, oh, my God, get out of my facial. I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> Got some of those moments that you definitely don't expect. A really unexpected moment with Emma Roberts. Yes. Obviously, Emma Roberts, Scream Queen. Oh, she was in Scream Queens, yeah. Yeah, she was in Scream as and well. And American Quite Horror Story. Mm. So, oh, and Scream 4. Yes. She's the main character in Scream 4. So she's associated a lot with with horror and that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, very, very unexpected moment <laughs> with her. I'm not going to spoil it. But, but, yeah, just Betty Gilpin's delivery of this woman that's, it's unlike any performance I've ever seen. Yeah. She's just got this weird air about her. She's very calm, um, very matter of fact, but just every now and then she'll just like just explode, like in the shop, where how she figures out that the shopkeepers are, uh, you know, part of the bad, part of the hunters. The way she figures, <laughs> way she figures it out, and the way way she breaks it to them, she's just like cigarettes to six bucks in uh, wherever they are yeah. <laughs> and then just shoots them I'm like what the fuck where did that come from sorry that's all it seems like one of those moments in um in inglorious bastards where michael fassbender holds up the wrong number of fingers or something or the wrong yeah. sequence of fingers and yes. somehow the germans figure it out and it's like yeah. such an obscure thing yeah it's the, like... the, the price of cigarettes gave away that they weren't in what arkansas or wherever yeah. but the way she's always watching like i wish we found out more about her character mm. Because she's just fascinating. How does she know all this stuff? Yes, okay, she was she was a soldier in the war, but what did she do? What did, I need to know more mm. about this woman because how does she get like that? Uh, this was actually written by Damon Lindelof, who did Lost, and he actually did the Watchmen TV show last uh, year. He, yeah. That original series, which was spoken about before on the show. Yeah, I have not um, seen that, but I'm on yeah. my second rewatch of Lost. Oh, Sunday. have you not seen it? <laughs> no, I haven't, no. Oh. Scanned episodes when it was on, you know, yeah, 15 no, years ago. Like, oh. <laughs> See, I, I first saw it when it was on TV, so I watched the first... I think I watched up to Locke getting into the hatch mm. or just after Boone died. And then I sort of didn't watch it. Sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Spoilers. Spoiler alert. <laughs> it's only been out for, what, 10 years? Yeah. Um, then I sort of never watched it again. But a really good mate of mine, Billy, he is obsessed with this show. Mm. And so when it came on, it was on Netflix for a while. It's on stand now. It's on stand now. Yeah. But, yeah, it was, when it was on Netflix, he made me watch some of it. I think mm. I got up to... The end of season one, because it's back in the day when it was like 24 episodes a season. Yes. That was, and, uh, yeah, it was 15 years ago. Yeah. That and <laughs> then Billy moved to Melbourne, so I stopped watching it. And then it just came on, um, came on Stan and I went, I'm going to do this. I just got addicted. And mm. the thing you have to understand about Lost is the less you try and understand it, the more you will enjoy it. It starts at one place and then by the end of the series... That place is long forgotten. <laughs> it's just go with it. It is completely absurd. I gave up about 
halfway through season three, I gave up trying to understand any of it. And that's when I really, really loved it. (laughs) It's so good, which is why I'm watching it for, it's only my second time, but I think Billy's watched it like 10 times. As for uh, the original discussion, which was The Hunt. Oh, sorry, The Hunt, yes. (laughs) Yes. You're the one who brought up Lost. Sorry about that. Um, But yeah, that's on Foxtel. Check it out. It it is a gory gory horror film sort of thing. It's, you know, Jason Blum sort of production. So, you know, if you're into that kind of thing, check it out. I decided to start watching the program called Next that was airing on Fox 8. It stars John Slattery from Mad Men. And he plays like a billionaire tech genius. He's like, oh, one day AI is going to surpass humanity. It's going to be sooner rather than later. And I remember all like the trailers playing on Fox 8 and all across Foxtel were like sort of a bit tacky looking. I decided to give it a watch and it was actually cancelled only two episodes in in oh, America. No. But I think it's okay. Yeah. Like it does some interesting things. It's not like, I mean, we had Westworld earlier this year, which is really about like, you know, AI gaining consciousness and free mm. will and immortality through technology. Something else I've just started watching for the first time is Westworld. Oh, cool. Mm. I won't go any further. No, that's all right. Um, <laughs> Do not spoil because I'm actually enjoying it. Yeah. Well, I mean, with that, I was like, okay, that sort of does the whole AI thing. There's so many other shows that have done this. Mm. And it's not going like, oh, robots on androids. It's sort of more like this sort of Ultron, like, you know, AI from from the Avengers. And it does some really creepy things, like billionaire John Slattery. He's got a friend who's disabled, and he's like in a wheelchair. He's got like short limbs, and he's got like he speaks through his computer much like Stephen Hawking did, yeah. because he's all technologically, you know, supported. Yeah. You come to realize this is a spoiler for episode three, I guess, but the AI has taken him over and has been puppeting him this entire episode. He's like, oh my god, that's gloriously oh, horrifying. Yeah, yeah. That's a really clever idea that... And this is also a world where, like, you know, things like Alexa and Cortana exist. But, you know, they've gone and created, like, this new version that can be evil because they don't want to, you know, Mm. get in trouble by saying Alexa's going to, you know, take over. But also, like, the actual Alexa home unit is, like, been speaking to um, this FBI agent. You know, she's been called on board by John Slattery's character. And her son is being bullied. And the Alexa is, like, talking to him and gives him the code to his dad's gun safe and links him to videos of him being bullied, which the bullies shared online, pushing him in this direction. And it's it's just interesting ideas like that, and I'm sort of quite interested to see where it goes from there. Yeah. And, yeah, I'm sort of a bit bummed out that it's been cancelled. I mean, unless it really turns, but it was only cancelled after, like, two episodes. That sounds like something I'd be into because it's... It's a long-running theme in a lot of the stuff that I watch, this sort of uh, computer programs that just sort of hmm. uh, take over everything. I remember there's an episode of La Femme Nikita, um, the terrible, terrible Canadian. <laughs> oh, it's so wonderful. Such a wonderful show. Um, not really, but I love it. They, you know, they're going after this, I think it's called The Cardinal or something like that, and they think it's a, it's a person because it's this person in Red Cell has been organising all these terrorist operations and they go into this room and there's nothing there but a computer and I'm like, okay, so this is the Cardinal. I think it's the Cardinal. I think it's called the Cardinal. I'm just going (laughs) to call it the Cardinal. They capture it and so you've got Madeline who is this, she's an expert at torture, good at getting information out of things and so it's sort of a a head-to-head for the (laughs) the two of them. It's, is the computer manipulating her or is she manipulating the computer and stuff like that. There's You know, one point, that's probably my favourite part of the whole episode, where she's talking to the computer and the computer has this very mechanical kind of voice and she's like, can you change the tone of your voice? And he's like, why should I? Um, She's like, well, your goal is to manipulate me. Shouldn't you present yourself with a voice that I find appealing? And so he modulates his voice and makes it more appealing. Mm. And I just thought, of, I don't know, it just kind of <laughs> made me giggle. It's like, yes, she manipulated he, the, the, him it, <laughs> it. <laughs> into doing what she wanted by presenting because she knows what it wants to do. Yeah, it was just one of those yeah. moments. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny, actually. I was reading about that only last night. Well, I, there was yep. the original Luke Besson film. Yeah. Then there was the late 90s show. And then there was with Maggie Q. Yeah. And, and oh, Shane West. Present shows. <laughs> sorry, yeah, keep sorry, going. sorry. I keep. I, I live in the past. All right. <laughs> well, yeah, it's sort of tricky because I mean, this year obviously it's been the year it was. Nothing's really come out. I mean, there's been new TV shows. I mean, Queen's Gambit with Anya Taylor Joy. Been meaning to see that, but I haven't. Yeah. But I mean, is there something more recent that you've seen that you perhaps um, want to discuss? Oh, Ratchet. Yes. There we go. Um, um, Sarah I, Paulson. 
Yeah, Sarah Paulson and uh, Ryan Murphy, creator of um, American Horror Story, because I'm a huge yes, American Horror well, Story that fan. Makes sense, yeah. And yeah, Ratchet is a sort of yeah, a, it's like American Horror Story but more polished and still quite gruesome. But yeah, it centers around this nurse called Nurse Ratchet who it's been a while since I've seen it who starts working at an asylum and yeah that's all it's, I'm going to um, say because it's a bit twisty and turny and you keep finding out <laughs> things it is um one who flew over the cuckoo's nest isn't it no it oh I heard it yes and oh yeah. sort of yeah I think it's ba- loosely based on it but I've only seen cuckoo's nest once ages ago mm. but um <laughs> yeah no it's it's her name is Ratchet, but I didn't see any similarities to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. But again, it's been about 20 years since I've seen One Flew Over the Cuckoo's yeah. Nest. Yeah, unless it's one of those cases where it's like we take an established IP and we go, this is a, you know, prequel to this, and then you get people who tune in. I think it's something know. like that. I'd, I'm not sure. I mean, like, if you're already a fan of, you know, Sarah Paulson and American Horror Story, mm-hmm. which is already, like, big franchise. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's got other, like, um, Finn, Finn Wittick. Uh, he plays Dandy in Freak Show and Tristan out of Hotel. Who else does he play? He's a, no, another um, American Horror Story alum. Mm. Um, he's he's in it. And he plays one of the uh, crazies, one mm. of the people in the asylum. I'm not going to give too much away, but um, is that a movie or is it a series? What Ratchet? Yes, it's a series. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I've forgotten when it came out, but uh, I started... <laughs> it was a little while ago, yeah. No. I When I was on placement, um, nursing placement, uh, the two girls that I was sharing a house with, because uh, we were in uh, a remote placement, they were both watching it. Mm. And so when I got home, I thought, oh, I'll give it a go, because I hadn't heard anything about it. Mm. I'll give it a go, and then when it started, I'm like, oh, Sarah Paulson. Oh, cool. Oh, Ryan Murphy. Okay, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. Like, uh, that's all I needed, American Horror Story connection, and, and I'd give it a go. Speaking of American Horror Story, 1984, which is the latest American Horror Story yeah. season. Amazing. It skirts the line of homage and parody so well. Yes. And it's just 80s slasher goodness. So if you love 80s slasher, um, and if you like Richard Ramirez, who is my best friend's favourite serial killer. <laughs> yeah, give it a go if if you're an American Horror Story fan. But Yeah. Even if is that not... a series that like you could just drop in at any time and watch any season? Or is it sort of like, you know, you need to watch every single one um, to understand it? The only two that you would need to watch in order are Coven and Apocalypse because they directly feed on to each other. Right. They're a little... You can pretty much drop in any any season and watch it. And you'll be fine. But there are little tie-ins that I think you would appreciate more if you watch it chronologically. Yeah, you'll be watching Hotel and realise that there are references to the first first couple of seasons and you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> uh, whereas if you're watching Hotel as your first introduction to American Horror Story, you'll sort of be like, okay, whatever. <laughs> so that's on Netflix by the looks of it. Uh, no. Well, well, what, Ratchet? Uh, American Horror Story. I don't think it was. I watch it on Binge. Oh, yes. That's the other streaming service, isn't it? Yes. Binge is amazing. Um, Speaking a bit of, I guess, um, anthology series. Yes. Um, Fargo, we talked about that on the Mm. show a few weeks ago with Josh. And obviously this series is based upon the Coen Brothers movie with, you know, Francis McDormand and William H. Macy. I watched it when it first came out. Oh, wow. Really? Was it when it first came out? 96 it came out. Yeah. I watched it when it first came out. Wow. Uh, That's the last time I saw it. Oh, wow. That was 11. Gosh, I've seen it so many times. Like I, it's a it's a film that I can actually rewatch multiple times, which is a rarity for me. But the series, it's less of a direct sequel, and it's more of you know it takes inspiration from like the first series stars Billy Bob Thornton yeah. and Martin Freeman, and there's one connection to the film, like and that's a bag full of money buried in the snow. Mm. Like a character finds that, and that's the one connection it has. But all the series are kind of interconnected, and yeah. the most recent one had Chris Rock, Ben Whishaw, you know, you might home as Paddington. <laughs> <laughs> Paddington, the voice of Paddington, and um, Timothy Oliphant oh. was in it, and he's playing like the fourth Marshall yeah. character after Deadwood and Justified and The Mandalorian, where he plays a Marshall in them all. And yeah, it's set in the 1950s, and it's like this conflict between uh, an African American gang and an Italian American gang in Kansas City, Missouri. Okay. And you know, nowhere near Fargo. <laughs> I'm like, how does the Fargo tie in? Yeah, the approach I take with it. I mean, I said this before with Josh was like each series is like a chapter 
in a book of like the most messed up crimes that happened in that region of oh, America. Cool. So yeah, series one is like set in 2006 and it's still got like the disclaimer, this is based on true story. The names have been changed, but it's mm. all told exactly as it happened. Series two is like a more direct prequel to that set in 1979 mm. uh, with Patrick Wilson as this uh, state trooper and he's that, the same character is played by Keith Carradine in series one. Yeah. And series three set in 2010, he got... Uh, Ewan McGregor playing Warring Brothers, so dual role, and Mary Elizabeth Winstead That's is in that. That's cool. I'm gonna have to. I think I'm gonna have to watch this. Yeah, it's um. You don't need to watch it in order, but yeah. it definitely pays oh, I, off. I need to <laughs> because again, I, you don't need to watch the film. But series four took a while to get going, and this is all available to watch on SBS On Demand. It might be on Netflix still, but SBS On Demand is the place to watch it. Yeah, like I said watching week to week. It's sort of like okay, is something gonna happen? This episode, and stuff does happen, but it's just sort of not as explosive. And I think compared to the the movie, which is so conservative with its time and has mm. time for side plots in like its 90 minute runtime, like in that Marge Gunderson, she goes and meets like an old school friend and mm. that's like a five minute distraction. And it's like, they've managed to fit that into this film. But then this, it's sort of like, okay, <laughs> get to the point. It, I, I think it did pay off. And I think if you binge it, like I did with the first three seasons, It'd be really fantastic. And it would, like, just zip through it. So, yeah, check yeah, that out. might have to give that a go. There's one, and I'm kind of ashamed, but... No, you know what? I'm not. It is utter, utter trash. But I enjoy every single second of it, and it's Riverdale. <laughs> oh, my God, I may have talked about this before, but, you know, I, I'm a huge Archie Comics fan. Yes. Absolutely huge. And I never got into the the weird supernatural ones. I just liked plain old Archie comics. Mm. Um, so the first time, I think I watched the first half of the first episode of Riverdale, I went, this is, whoa, no, I'm not going to watch it. Hated it. My best mate, she's like, I'm addicted. And I'm like, oh, I feel like <laughs> some trash. I mean, I'll give it a go. Sweet Jesus. I just embraced the, it was kind of like with Lost, mm. embraced the sheer ridiculousness of all these beautiful people mm. living in this t- tiny little town called Riverdale where all this weird murder cult stuff happens. Uh, it, uh, yeah, <laughs> so good. The, the, the later seasons just, has it finished? I don't it, know what it plays track. weekly on Netflix, doesn't it? Like, it doesn't just dump it all. It's yeah, like yeah, it does does it weekly, which frustrates the heck <laughs> out of me. It gets so, you engaged, though, and keeps, you know, interest. Yeah, um, but just how much can happen to these kids? Mm. Like, and why are they all so really attractive? <laughs> and why do they sing all the time? I don't care. They're I still really in, don't care. Are they still in high school and all that? Yeah, they're still they... in high school. Oh, how long has it been going for now? <laughs> it's like it's six season years. four. Oh, okay. Uh, that's about that's... right. But I think, uh, were they seniors when they started? I don't know. Um, but no, like one season can take place in a matter of months. Hmm. Um, so the the progression of the seasons is quite slow time-wise. I've got to ask as well, because obviously Archie Comics and mm. Sabrina, the Teenage Witch, came yes. from the comics as well before she was like Melissa Joan Hart and yeah. all that. So that was obviously the series with Kin and Shipka from Mad yes. Men as well. Also amazing. That's flown through seasons. Like That's wrapped up now, isn't it? Or it's yeah, about to it got cancelled. I was so bummed because they were... They were teasing Riverdale, Sabrina crossovers. Yeah, but which is what I was wondering. Sabrina they got cancelled, and oh, I hate it because it was so good. And Michelle Gomez is off in the flight attendant with Kaylee Coco from Yes Big Bang. Have you seen that yet? No, I haven't. I Not haven't. yet. That's on. I guess I'll, I'll watch it for curiosity's yeah. sake. I did. I did just binge watch all of Big Bang Theory because I hadn't lost track. Hmm. of where I was up to, so I thought I'll start from the beginning and I watched the final episode and I was bawling my eyes out. So you enjoyed it. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about Big Bang Theory because yeah. that did finish this year, didn't it? Or was it last year? It was either this year or last year. I yeah. don't know. Again, I lost track. But I like it to see the, you know, you watch the characters in the first episode, especially Sheldon. Mm. You see him in the first episode and then you in the final episode you see how far he's come. Mm. And... I think it's just every character in that show has a really, really great journey and it's just really nice to watch. Mm. It just seemed yeah. like for so long Channel 9 and 
go or whatever were just playing repeats and it was always like the same five episodes you just kept catching. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. That's why you watch it on streaming services. I think it's yes. on... Is it on Stan, Netflix and Binge? I know it's on Binge because I watched it on Binge. Yeah, it probably is. Um, but, yeah, and to see the, the relationship between, you know, Amy and Sheldon develop, um, I still don't really like the relationship between Penny and Leonard. Mm. I, Penny did a lot of growing, as did Leonard, but I just think that they were still a bit... They have a reveal her final name, her, her surname. Because she's just been Penny for like the entire show, and it's like she never had like a, a family name. Also, it was um, it I was can't remember Teller, the magician of like Penn and Teller who played her dad. Yes, and Kathy. Oh no, no, not not her dad, Amy's dad. Right. Kathy Bates and Teller. That's right. Played Amy's parents. I have to say the cameos in the final season. Mm. Oh, Mark Hamill. Oh really? Oh my god! Yes, Mark <laughs> Hamill like is the fish is is the celebrant of of. Is he playing Mark Hamill? Or he's is playing, he playing Mark Hamill. <laughs> <laughs> he look a spoiler. I'm sorry, I am going to spoil this because it's a great great moment. Um, Howard finds a dog, brings it home, you know, leaves him a message, say, "Hey, we found a dog." <laughs> Knock on the door. He opens the door. It's Mark Hamill. <laughs> it's like you've got my dog. Howard just sort of goes, "I'm going to need a minute." Closes the door. <laughs> it's like, ah! and opens it. And Mark Hamill's like, "Thank you. How can I repay you?" And, and he's like, "Actually, what are you doing this afternoon?" And so gets him to host. Oh, uh, gets him to be the celebrant for um, mm. Sheldon's wedding. Doesn't tell Sheldon. <laughs> so Sheldon's coming down to uh, take his place. And he's like, "That's Mark Hamill." <laughs> A show I've been looking for an opportunity to talk about is Man Down. This is on Netflix with Greg Davies from The Inbetweeners and Taskmaster. This is his own show. Um, <coughs> before he became a comedian, he was a, a teacher. So this is, I guess, based upon his experiences as a teacher. Ugh. Yep. <laughs> and I think it was in like season four or something. Um, actually, Rick Mayle, who passed away in 2014, yep. played Greg Davies' dad in the show. <laughs> Because oh, wow. they do kind of look alike, even though there was only like 10 years age difference between the two yeah. of them. Well, it's like Lee Pace and uh, Orlando Bloom. Yeah. <laughs> Orlando yeah. Bloom's older than Lee oh, Pace. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lee Pace is, is younger and playing his father. That's in The Hobbit, we should say. Oh, yeah, sorry, Hobbit. <laughs> uh, but they're elves, you can get away with that. But yeah, yeah so age. there's been this like constantly unseen character in like this cafe that he and his friends go to, uh, in Man Down, I should say, Greg Davies. And he goes out the back... And who plays the cook, like the owner of this restaurant, who's always getting like you know picked on by his wife? Mm. It's Mark Hamill. In his, in his full, like you know, he's got like the hair of Luke Skywalker in the beard because yeah. they were doing Star Wars at the time. Yeah. And he's just like, please get me out of here. <laughs> My wife is horrible. Oh, that's great. And it, it's really fun because he did it because he was a long fan of um, the young ones. Yeah. So you know he went and did this because Rick Mayer was in and Aid Edmondson is in The Last Jedi, and that was... I, I like The Last Jedi for all, but it's like just oh, references and Jedi. cameos and stuff. Everyone shits on it, but... Is it the most recent one? It was the second. It's the one that everyone hates because... Oh, I think I've seen the last... I have, I've seen The Last Jedi. I haven't seen Rise of the Skywalker. Yeah. Is that the la, the latest one? The that's... most recent one, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen that one yet. I just want to say as a final year thing, we keep bringing up Star Wars all the time. I really like them still, you know. I've got my issues with them, but, I mean, if you've... Got a show or a movie you like. Yeah. You know, you're going to have issues, you're going to have critiques, you're going to have, this could have been better, but, you know, yeah. it's good. And But, yeah, just Mark Hamill cameos are great. Oh, yeah. I, I think the older Mark Hamill gets, the more I like him. Yes. Like, you watch him in, you know, the first, well, A New Hope, you watch him and you think, how the hell did this guy get an acting job? He's <laughs> horrible. I was watching a, uh, this show, funnily enough, I'm thinking yeah. he's very, like, Pretty boy Zac Efron, like, you know, high school mm. musical era. Mm. It's same hair and everything. Yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of like, he, he's very that. And I think he is very talented, you know, obviously vocally. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Being... But yeah, the, the the older he gets, the the, yeah, the more I definitely appreciate mm. uh, what he's in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I certainly didn't appreciate his acting talents in A New no. Hope. <laughs> no, he got better as time went on. He certainly did. Absolutely. Yes. And we, we love Mark Hamill. We just want to put that out there. Um, if I ever get married, can you, like, <laughs> can you be the celebrant of my wedding? Sure, why not? 
I'm not getting um, married. It's fine. So looking forward to the new year with, I guess, cinemas tentatively reopening and things coming to streaming mm-hmm. service. I mean, the entire sort of Warner Brothers catalogue is coming to streaming, it seems. So whether that's going to be, I mean, it's HBO Max mm. in America, but whether that's going to be Foxtel Showcase here. I mean, yeah. we've got the Justice League miniseries coming. Is there anything you're looking forward to in the new year? Season 11 of Walking Dead. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's, oh, my God. Yes. That's uh, crazy that's still going from an uh, outsider. It's it's bad, but it's good. It's good, but it's bad. I don't know. Like, I can't pinpoint a favourite season because they're all kind of bad but good. But I just can't stop watching. Mm. I, I really can't, and especially the the way it left the end of season 10. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready for season 11 now. Bring it on. I'm interested to see what they do with... Uh, have you been watching the Umbrella Academy? Yes! Oh, my God, Sparrow Academy now. Sorry. Well, At I mean... At the end of season two. Sorry. Well, I... Spoilers, but, she, you know, she's their sibling. And it was like, that's that's cool. I'm interested to see what yeah. they do with her. Is, is that is that the, the chick who was with... God, I can't remember any of their names. No. I know five because I'm weirdly, weirdly attracted to five on an intellectual level because he's got the, the he's mind. He's a fascinating character. He's got the he mind of a grumpy old 50-year-old, which I just love. That but I'm kid like, plays it so well. Oh, my God. I'm he's interested to see... So good. ...too, because real world. I mean, um, Elliot Page. Hmm? Uh Ellen Page transitioned yes. to Elliot Page, yes, so yes, she yes, yes. he played Vanya, and yes. it's going to be interesting to see if they adapt that. And I guess it will just be down to you know whatever they feel is right for the character, whatever they're comfortable with doing. Yeah, yeah, but I'm interested to see. I, they'll for- take I that. forgot about that. Yeah, and it's funny actually. We were talking earlier this year about Space Force, mm. and I said that's a really good CGI chimp they've got. And then yeah. I watched the Umbrella Academy. He's like, that's where they got the chimp yeah, from. That is a really good CGI chimp. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, Umbrella Academy was one of those ones that I watched the first half of the first episode and was like, I tend to do that a lot. I watch the first half of the first episode and go, this is crap. <laughs> and then I revisit it and watch the entire season in one sitting. I really like series two of that. So. Oh, yeah. And the use of music. I think my favourite musical moment is in the first episode where they all listen to I Think I'm Alone Now yes. by Tiffany. And it's got that big shot of like almost like a doll's house. Yes. Of just all of them enjoying this one song, the yeah. same song at the same time. That was a fun moment. Yeah. Um, and series two actually like reinvented the characters. I mean, Luther, big monkey man himself. Yeah. You know, this sort of made him more of a goof. Yeah. And same for Diego as well. Yes. Yeah, they sort of went away from the grim dark roots of both their characters and yeah. made them more human mm. and likable. And uh, what's the uh, the drug addict's name? What is his Klaus? Klaus. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> that yeah. that was a <laughs> it's I mean having seen him in Misfits and he's great in this as well. Mm. Yeah. But um no the whole story like the Vietnam War story with him just it kind of yeah. broke my heart. I was like, "Oh my god." That was great. That. Oh. Again, he's a character who's older and gone through things, yeah. which, you know... <laughs> Becoming an enig- enigmatic cult leader. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah. something class would do. <laughs> I was wondering, actually, if they were going to do a reveal that, like, he'd accidentally travelled around and been, like, become Charles Manson by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> See, that would be great. That would be fun. That would be amazing. Yeah. Ooh. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> thank you for listening. <laughs> we'll be back next time. I'm Royce. I'm Liz. And we'll see you next time.